interestingly enough, especially as I find, I find myself in, in Germany right now today, my first uh, job as a cameraman was for ZDF. Well, I started actually uh, quite a long time before start, the Star Wars film. My first film was a very, a very interesting movie, uh, semi shot on a semi amateur basis, but it was a full length movie. And it imagined Britain occupied by Germany. It was called It Happened Here. And I shot that when I was 22. And that in fact launched me. And then I worked with uh, another director whose name is Peter Watkins, who, had, who was notorious for having made a film about an atomic attack on, on Britain. And it was banned by the people who commissioned it, the BBC. But I've, I shot a film with him, which George Lucas saw when he was a student. It was called Privilege. And that's why George Lucas called, called me initially for the first Star Wars film. And I went to see him for that film. And I said to him straight away, I'm probably not the right uh, director of photography for your film because I don't have experience in visual effects. You should have the man who shot 2001, which was the big science fiction film, uh, uh, almost a reference point for everybody. And the studio agreed with me <laughs> and said to him, he should have somebody more experienced than I was for his first film. Well, it was actually his second film, but it was the first Star Wars, Star Wars film. But the, um, he ended up with a very, very good director of photography, but they were not in sympathy with each other at all. And to, to the point where he, uh, they didn't want to work together again. So he, he, I got a call about the second one and went to meet the director, Irvin Kirshner. I didn't meet directly with George Lucas. And we just enjoyed each other's company and he liked the work that I'd done on, uh, with Ken Russell, Listomania. And uh, lucky enough, he asked me to shoot the film. That, that's how it happened. I, I actually, actually said to Irvin Kirshner, look, I, I went up for the first film, the first Star Wars film, uh, and I said, I don't have visual, uh, effects, visual effects experience. And I have to tell you that I still don't have visual effects experience uh, for a science fiction film. And uh, Lucas over the phone said, that's not a problem. You'll come out to see us in San Francisco and we'll tell you, we'll discuss it all there. So that's, that's how it started. When it came to David Cronenberg, I'd sp I had spent some years not finding the sort of projects I wanted to work on. When I got a call from him, I have to confess, I didn't know any of his films because I thought of him as a horror film director and I don't like horror films. So I'd never seen any. Uh, I'm, I have to be honest and say that and I'm still slightly ashamed at the same time that I went in naked in a sense, not, not knowing his work. But I'd read the script and I thought the script promised to be, uh, had the possibility, the script had the possibility of making a really good movie. And I met him and we got on extremely well st straight away. We had, we had something going between us very, uh, of sympathy, intellectual sympathy and we both liked uh, love movies. Not, not all, we don't always have the same taste in everything, but um, we have an enthusiasm for, for the medium. He has a very challenging mind. He's extremely intelligent. He must be the most intelligent director I've ever worked with. And his, the projects he was uh, involved with were always cha very challenging and they weren't they were not uh, violent just for the sake of violence. They, they had a, sometimes had an element of, of violence in them, but it was always for, for a good reason and not f for the sake of violence. I have to say that I, I don't like horror films and I don't like shooting them because I, I 
personally in my, in my work, I have to believe that what is happening in front of the lens is real. And if it feels f fake or false in any way, um, I know that the, the scene is not, not a successful scene, if it feels, even if it feels false from the acting point of view. So I, because I have to believe that it's true, if I see something very unpleasant and cruel through, through the lens, I, I feel very uncomfortable because I believe it is actually happening. And on the few occasions when we have, with David, when I've shot something uh, violent or with a lot of blood in it, I've had to close my eyes. And sometimes in the, uh, in the first few films that, on which we worked together, uh, I handed him the camera. And I said, well, look, you, because I was always operating the camera myself on his films, um, I said, you do this one. And I'll watch from, I'll half watch with my eyes half closed. Would be equally uncomfortable for me each time. But the challenge of his films is not just a challenge to shoot something violent because that's only a, uh, an occasional and small element in the films. The, the attractive nature of the projects for me each time was that each one was, was a challenge to, to realize. The, they were always unusual projects, like, like Crash. I, th I think that reading the book, one, before the film was made, one would have said, how can one possibly make a film of this? That was, that was a challenge each time. And uh, one film was never the, s the same at all, uh, as the previous one. And I loved that side of it. In this case, I did read the book, but normally, normally I, I confess that I don't, in most cases, read a book from which the film, uh, the, the film script is taken because probably afterwards I will, will be confused uh, as to what's in, what is in each one, what, what is in the script and what is in the book. The short answer is how, about how, how I translated the script to the screen in visual terms, I don't know. And David himself always says to me, the, the day before we, or the night before we're going to, to do our first day shooting. He says, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I say, that I feel the same. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I have certain ideas, but I work from, from the inside, from the script, from the feeling the script gives, gives me and from my, from my guts. I, I don't uh, impose uh, an intellectualized look on the feel, on, 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 the, on the, uh, the, the film. Um, I think my style varies from, from film to film, but it's not a conscious thing. And I certainly didn't want to give you the opportunity to say that it looks like eye candy because that's a terrible expression, a pejorative expression. Uh, I didn't do shots that were pretty for the sake of prettiness in, in Crash. I think it has um, a hard, tough nature to it um, in, the, in the script. And I hope, I, th I like uh, my, my work, I, in my work I seek to be expressive of the emotions of the, the contents of the script. If it turns out to be uh, striking looking, uh, that's all to the good, but I, I don't want it to be pretty. Working on that film was a tough, tough, physically tough experience. The weather was cold. We were often outside. Sometimes we were outside at night on the back of a, a truck filming cars. Um, it wasn't easy, but on the other hand, I, I can, I, my memories of it are of having great fun. I laughed a lot on that film. Uh, the, the atmosphere for, of shooting on a film with David Cronenberg was always very relaxed and designed and directed to help everybody do their best work under as least as little tension as possible. Of course, in movie making, we're all under stress and tension to do our work as well as possible 
uh, in, in the time given, and we're all exposed, in a, in a sense, the actors are exposed to, um, to the, the gaze of the, the viewer of the, of the film, and certainly a cinematographer is a sort of performance artist uh, doing his or her work in front of everybody. Um, but I had great fun, and some of the situations were so potentially uh, funny, it, although you, at first sight, the film is not a comedy at all, but some of the, 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 the scenes in which uh, the characters have, for instance, to, 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 to make sex in, a, in a, small, a very, very small car, they have their comic side to them. And I found, the, I found a lot to, to challenge me as a cameraman, but also a lot to have fun with. The atmosphere is always calm on these shoots, as calm as possible. And I think that helps the actors to, to relax. We were sometimes shooting in demanding situations in which we, we were exposed, exposed to risks of having an accident in a car. But not all the film was like that. There are one or two scenes shot in a studio, um, many of them. Many of the, most of the other scenes are, uh, well, all the other scenes are on location. What, do, what did I do and myself to, to make the actors feel comfortable? Well, it's a quiet set. They're very, when we're working, when I'm preparing, I, I'm behind the camera myself. I have uh, a very, very good assistant and then I have the electrical team, but basically a, a smallish team because these are, uh, films in, uh, in which the budget won't extend to having a very large team. It was, it, the, the films are always on the edge of challenging the budget. <laughs> They're always very ambitious. But it didn't mean, that doesn't mean that we had lots and lots of people around us. Uh, we are the only people, or I'm the only person on, on the film, who's working 100% of the time. Everybody has to wait for me. I watch a rehearsal, I, then I, I discuss it with, with the director, and then I start preparing the shot. Uh, we shoot the shot, and I have to start preparing the next one. There's no time in which to sit down and talk about or listen to gossip about what happens off the set. My wife often asks me uh, what, uh, if, if I have any interesting stories to tell about the, the set, and I, I dis usually disappoint her, simply because I don't have time to, to think about anything except the job in hand. Well, I thought it was, uh, I thought the reaction of the public, to, or of the newspapers, or particularly the Daily Mail, was ridiculous. But it's the Daily Mail that has been fighting for Brexit, so I have no, no respect for that paper at all. Uh, the film was, in fact, I believe, banned from one or two areas in London. Perhaps it was all good publicity for the film. I don't know, but I didn't take it very seriously. The reaction of, of my friends and my wife, in particular, was all, is always very supportive and she and I had and have a very good relationship with David Cronenberg and with his wife who unfortunately died a, a year ago. We were close friends. Luckily there weren't any accidents but I, I personally nearly had two accidents. There was one uh, on which I was on a camera dolly which is a very heavy object on the back of a truck uh, with the car on the back of the truck as, at the same time and um, we wanted to do a, a tracking shot with the car moving and the car, our, our truck changed direction in an unexpected way which is something that is discouraged from happening. 
because it's quite dangerous when not, the crew doesn't expect uh, a change of direction. And the uh, grips who were holding the dolly had a great deal of trouble holding it and preventing it falling off the, off the back of the truck. And I was aware during the shot that that was happening. So that wasn't a comfortable feeling. And another time we were using an elevated freeway for a night scene with, with a, a, a sort of car chase. But we could only use one side of it for both, both directions. It, that, the police closed one side of the freeway for us. So we were able to go both uh, one direction for filming and another direction to put ourselves in the right place for the next take. And I went up to have a look at it before we were ready to shoot. And I went up by taxi with somebody who had never been up there um, in the wrong direction before. When he drove back in the wrong direction, he was not aware that the freeway came to a sudden stop. And uh, we were within only 20, 30 meters of going over the top of the, the, of the freeway and tumbling down onto the next level. I, I had to scream at the driver for him to stop. But luckily we didn't have any accidents, just near accidents. The most am amusing challenge I had, I think, was to shoot a scene um, on a balcony overlooking a network of freeways near the beginning of the film. Uh, on a real lo location, a tiny apartment with a, a minuscule balcony, just room for the, uh, for the actress. Um, I'm trying to remember the measurements of it, but it, wasn't, it was very shallow and, and it had no depth. So the, the reverse shots on the characters' faces, because they are look, the, the, the actors are looking at the traffic with the camera behind the actors, and we needed to do uh, some reverses, some shots in the other direction. We decided to do them in a studio. So the amusing challenge was to uh, recreate the light in the studio and make it feel as real as the location felt. I, I like that. I, I've always enjoyed that kind of challenge. I believe you still can't get uh, very close to actors with a drone. They are still potentially dangerous. And they don't really permit great, really fine precision, precision work in, in, in close to actors. We might have been able to do the whole thing in the studio today. We would have done the shots over the, sh the shoulders of the actors with a green screen in front of the actors. And then in post-production, we would have Replay, replace the green screen by the actual location and it would, look, would have looked real. I think it would be done this way today because they would say it's quicker and in the end cheaper and more controllable. I personally don't like a lot of green screen shooting. I've done a lot of it, but I, um, I know that some films have been made using almost entirely green screen. I think it's difficult to, to shoot that way. It's not stimulating for the actors. They have nothing to react to because there's nothing there. And the same goes for myself. I need, I need to see something, to, to feel something, and actually see it to, to understand how I'm going to, to photograph it. The films don't resemble each other. They're different each, each time. And that's something that I really enjoyed in my re long relationship with David Cronenberg. I was never going to, we were never going to repeat ourselves.